Today in this lecture we are going to discuss the treatment of decompensated heart failure and specifically we are going to discuss the role of digitalis and diuretics. Now to understand the decompensated heart failure I am simply going to summarize the uh, acute chronic effects of cardiac failure then the compensated heart failure and decompensated heart failure i have discussed these things in detail in our last 3 to 4 lectures but i am quickly going to summarize and then discuss the treatment of decompensated heart failure now we have discussed that cardiac failure is basically the inability of the heart to pump enough blood to satisfy the needs of the body normally the heart is pumping 5 liters of blood per minute which is known as the cardiac output and it is sufficient for satisfying the needs of the human body in normal circumstances. Here we have plotted the cardiac output on the y-axis and the right atrial pressure on the x-axis, right atrial pressure which is basically pressure at this point, right atrium. Now what happens is that when heart failure occurs acutely and heart failure occurs acutely and most of the time the acute heart failure occurs due to ischemic heart disease or uh, when ischemia occurs due to blockage of some blood vessel which is supplying blood to the different parts of the heart. For example this part of the heart it is receiving blood from a blood vessel it is receiving blood from some blood vessel and that blood vessel is blocked so acute heart failure will occur and it will have some consequences it will have some acute uh, effects and chronic effects that is something which we have discussed again and again in our last few lectures but once this uh, acute damage has occurred it will lead to decrease in the functioning of the heart and the, the amount of blood that the heart is pumping every minute which is known as the cardiac output it will fall directly from this level here we have shown the normal heart here we have the normal heart in which the heart is pumping 5 liters of blood per minute and the right atrial pressure is 0 so normal right atrial pressure is here and the normal cardiac output is here due to the acute damage of the heart the cardiac output will fall from this point to this point which, which we have labeled as acute damage now in acute damage the cardiac output has decreased and the right atrial pressure has slightly increased then what happens is within few seconds the sympathetic systems get activated the sympathetic system basically comes from the brain and spinal cord it increases the heart rate it increases the force of contraction of the heart it basically constricts the peripheral vessels and push more blood towards the heart due to these effects the cardiac output with the help of sympathetic system basically increases a little bit more so initially the cardiac output fell from the normal level to this point due to the acute damage then with the help of sympathetic system it increased a little bit to this point and after some uh, time the chronic effects of cardiac failure starts and because there is decrease in the cardiac output the cardiac output is below the normal level it is below the normal level so kidneys are not receiving sufficient blood so basically what happens is that the, the amount of urine the amount of urine that the kidneys are forming every hour basically it decreases the patient goes into anuria and the kidneys start uh, fluid retention it keeps on retaining the fluid in the body the fluid the fluid or the The amount of blood starts increasing because more fluid is retained by the kidneys and the amount of urine is decreased. Now due to increase in fluid the amount of blood returning to the heart increases, the venous return increases, the filling pressure increases. So it increases the cardiac output a little bit more. It increases a little bit more and eventually the cardiac output may become exactly normal at the cost of a little bit higher right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure may be a little bit higher but cardiac output eventually become normal this is known as compensated heart failure compensated heart failure compensated heart failure we have discussed it previously as well now because the heart the different systems the sympathetic system and the fluid retention it has helped in bringing back the cardiac output towards its normal level 
although it is it is it has been brought to the normal five liters but it is still below the normal because there is some damage to the heart if the patient is normal it is not uh, the patient is not doing some exertion the, the it this cardiac output will be sufficient but if the patient starts some exercise or exertion then this cardiac output is below the normal level there is decrease in the cardiac reserve now this patient has compensated heart failure slowly and gradually the urine output will start increasing the, the fluid retention will decrease this fluid will eventually go away and the patient may return to normal life but if the damage if the damage to the heart is very much high for example a, a big portion of the heart has been damaged and the acutely the cardiac output has fallen and with the help of sympathetic system and with the help of fluid retention the cardiac output is uh, being increased but somehow it is not coming to this point and it re it remains below this level it remains here or here because the damage to the heart is very much big and uh, the the heart cannot recover with these uh, compensations so the the card the heart cannot achieve this normal cardiac output the heart cannot achieve this cardiac output and the cardiac output remains somewhere here or here or here but will never come to this normal level it will not come to this normal level in this condition this is known as a decompensated heart failure decompensated heart failure now the point is the the basically the topic of our discussion is the treatment of decompensation and the main role of digitalis and diuretics now if the damage is very much big the heart is weak and there is a lot of fluid retention and it is basically not helping to increase the cardiac output now how can the treatment basically help to improve the cardiac function and to decrease the fluid retention because if the fluid retention is mild if the fluid retention is mild it is going to increase the cardiac output it is going to help in recovering but if the fluid retention if the formation of urine is very much low or the patient goes into renal shutdown then this fluid retention is going to damage because because the the more fluid it will uh, that will return to the heart it will basically stretch the heart heart more and more fluid will be accumulated in the lungs and the heart is basically weak a lot a big damage has occurred here due to obstruction of a big heart vessel probably so the heart cannot recover in initial case in the compensated heart failure the patient the heart damage to the heart is very much low so the basically the with these compensations and the improvement in the damage area the heart recovers and then it is labeled as compensated heart failure but in decompensated heart failure the damage is so much big that the fluid retention is occur occurring and the heart is weak it is cannot pump it cannot uh, pump uh, at a normal rate with the normal force so it is leading to decompensation and uh, accumulation or retention of a lot of fluid then in these circumstances what we do is is that we do uh, we give some treatments now we give a drug which is basically cardiotonic it, it is known as digitalis now what digitalis does is that it increases the amount of calcium in cardiac cells or heart muscles this drug which is known as basically digitalis it increases the power of the heart it helps the heart it helps this weak heart in contracting more forcefully so when the this heart will contract more forcefully it will basically increase the cardiac output and it may be able to increase the cardiac output from this level to this level and the uh, the cardiac output can become normal and the patient can recover but how this digitalis basically increase the force of contraction of the heart it basically increases the calcium level in the um, cardiac muscles so basically normal if this digitalis is given to a normal person it is not going to increase the force of contraction of the heart but if this is given to a weak heart if it is given to a weak heart then it is going to increase the efficiency of the heart 
by 50 to 100 percent so this is the role of digitalis we are not going to detail because this we are discussing this topic from physiology point of view there is a big debate on uh, the, the the use of different kinds of medicines or how these medicines should be used when these medicines should be used what should be the um, the dosage of these medicine how often these medicines should be used who will basically prescribe these medicines these are the domain of basically physicians and cardiologists we are just discussing from physiology point of view that digitalis or increasing the force of heart contraction is a treatment option in decompensated heart failure and what digitalis does is that it increases the amount of calcium in the cardiac muscles so it basically helps in more forceful contraction of the heart now the second treatment option is that it is basically the second treatment option is diuretics now basically we discussed that in decompensated heart failure there is a lot of fluid retention in compensated heart failure once the cardiac output increases above uh, 5 liters the kidneys start increasing the urine formation it starts increasing the urine formation and this fluid it go out of the body but in in that is something which happen in compensated heart failure but in decompensated heart failure in decompensated heart failure because the cardiac output is not coming towards the normal so the amount of blood that is coming to the renal uh, to the kidneys is also decreased so the kidneys is basically retaining more and more fluid and which is basically detrimental it is basically detrimental or it is very dangerous for the heart because the heart is weak in this condition and it cannot recover so to uh, to counteract this fluid retention we give diuretics what diuretics does is that they increase the formation of urine from the kidneys so when the for when diuretics basically increase the formation of urine they decrease fluid retention they decrease fluid retention now the amount of fluid that is returning to the heart basically decreases the right atrial pressure decreases and this the stretch the heart the stretching of the heart which was caused by increased fluid retention it basically decreases and the the accumulation of the fluid in the lungs basically pulmonary edema it also decreases so diuretics basically increase the formation of urine it decreases fluid retention it it helps in decreasing the right atrial pressure it helps in contracting the increased stretching force on the heart and it also helps in decreasing the pulmonary edema because fluid starts collecting in the lungs as well which basically decreases the oxygenation oxygenation process of the blood so by by giving diuretics we are helping the heart to improve its performance and with the help of these uh, drugs these medicines and some other medicines which we are going to discuss in detail in the heart failure section the heart can basically recover and the patient can survive for years and years so this is basically the role of uh, digitalis and diuretics in the treatment of a decompensated heart failure thanks a lot for watching the video